with Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies back on the rise today? Shall we take another fresh look into the market? Kenny, a real honor having you in the studio of Insight tomorrow. Thank you for having me. As a computer engineer, as a serial entrepreneur, and your Forbes listed, you have founded Payout uh, Ribbon and now move to Switzerland to settle with Amun, which aims to buy cryptocurrency as easy as stocks. Exactly. <laughs> so tell us more about Amun and the uh, crypto market, I would say. Why we need to buy, look into crypto? Is it an instrument that is uh, like a new tool for fintech market? Or it brings a certain value for general business public as industrialists and consumers? Why we need to look at cryptocurrency? It actually has many varied uses. We think of finance a lot because it's near and dear to our heart, but it actually has use cases in things as varied as logistics and shipping and healthcare. Uh, fundamentally, it is a disruptive technology that should reduce cost and increase efficiency. And I think the best way of seeing um, why we should be taking close attention um, and paying close attention to this is by seeing who the players are that are investing uh, in the technology underneath. Just in the last week, we learned that Microsoft is building a um, a set of technologies on top of uh, blockchain and Bitcoin specifically. Amazon is patenting new proof of works. Uh, Facebook right here in Switzerland uh, is building a new payments token. Um, in addition to other efforts by IBM, JP Morgan, um, and, uh, and, and many other companies across a multitude of sectors. Okay, so um, in cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, 2017, it was a phenomenal rise. Mm -hmm. And then it subsequent drop. And markets kind of cooled down because some people were buying and they got burned and they said, okay, maybe I don't look at this anymore. Now Bitcoin is rising again. Is it a cyclical trend? What's, what's going in the market right now? Why we look back yeah. again in the currency? So there's two, there's two things I look at there. One is what has happened since the last bubble and, and the fall of it. And what has happened is that a lot of institutional tools and infrastructure has been built by some very large, uh, reputable institutional players. We see people and firms like Fidelity and the New York Stock Exchange getting into the space and building very high professional tools uh, for investors. Uh, the other thing is that I think it's important to remember that it is a disruptive technology and volatility is a part of disruptive technology. Uh, one of the best examples of this is Amazon, which as both a stock and a company, no one can argue against um, how good of an investment it is and has been. Um, not even people that are more anti-tech like Warren Buffett, who has recently uh, admitted that it was a mistake not to purchase Amazon stock by him. Yet Amazon, since its IPO in 1997, has a median drawdown per year of 30%. We tend not to remember that or think about it. Um, and so it's the, the volatility is part and parcel with disruptive technologies sometimes. Now for crypto markets, for cryptocurrency and indexes to develop, what are the obstacles or underwater rocks in this, in this area? So we, we touched on a couple of them. Uh, one is the greater institutionalization of tools. Uh, more professional, reputable, regulated players uh, like the banks, like the exchanges, um, getting into the space and, and building. Uh, another very important feature and something that you know, you're know you helping us do here is further education. Uh, it's new technology, it needs to be addressable to a wide swath of people and we need to do a much better job of uh, getting the facts, figures and educating the people Explaining. on why and how and, and how uh, this will end up impacting all of us. Fintech professionals, they, they learn because of their job, but other people, not necessarily. Technologies of this scale 
because you can compare it to the computer or the internet. And with both of them, they've ended up touching every industry that we've known. And so this will be in everyone's lives, and it's important that uh, people are uh, knowledgeable about it. I totally agree about education, and uh, we need to explain more and more uh, to, to every business person why cryptocurrency, why to invest, and why to use it. And it has to do with the blockchain, which is uh, to make the system more efficient. So um, very logically, mathematically, it is an uncorrelated asset. Uh, very low correlation to traditional uh, bonds, equities, uh, commodities uh, that has an uh, upsize return. So it looks more like a venture capital investment. In addition to what we see as an intergenerational shift and how millennials are treating this as digital gold, in addition to using this on a more macro level as a global hedge, um, with the recent trade issues, trade talks, Bitcoin went up. Um, and it, it could be used with respect to geopolitical risks, with respect to um, other economic uh, and social risks around the world as a huge hedge. So there's a number of different reasons and avenues from which one could and should enter uh, investing in crypto. Well, uh, question, big question is about money laundering. Mm -hmm. um, how we can control, because crypto is not centralized currency, how we can control the source of cash, the source of money in crypto. So that's a big reason why we're in Switzerland and not in potentially an easier uh, but less regulated jurisdiction. We are uh, quite careful about very stringent KYC AML requirements. And I think there's a number of regulators, including the Swiss, who have done an exceptional job setting up the ground rules in order for us to uh, be allowed to play with the new technology and all of its use cases, but do it in a way that still guarantees security, still guarantees um, a lack of nefarious activities in criminals, etc. And what we often find is that in many ways, the blockchain is actually easier to trace um, than bank transactions and uh, even better to uh, target and uh, scales up in a better way than transacting in cash, which a lot of crimes today end up happening in. And so, in addition to all of the regulations that are helping out, uh, law enforcement agencies right now around the world are also using the blockchain to more easily track money laundering. All right. So education is a key for developing the cryptocurrency markets. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Hani, for this interview. Happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for watching this interview with Hani Rushman, which is to be continued, and stay tuned to our next episode of Insight tomorrow. I'm your host, Yelena Ganzov.